Hey everybody, welcome back. We're on Unit 3, the ASAD model, okay? And that's what we're looking at in this particular video, in this Part 8, is the ASAD model. The full model is what we're going to be looking at. I put a little yeah baby down here because you've had to sit through seven videos to get here, okay? And here on this eighth video, I finally have the full graph. So let's go to it. Let's start looking at this full graph. What we should understand at this time for sure is that the vertical axis, what we're measuring vertically, is the price level, the weighted average of all prices of all final goods and services. This axis over here, okay, what you'll see a lot of times is real GDP, and that's perfectly fine, okay? Some other things you might see is output. That's okay also, okay? So output. So we're talking about goods and services. But sometimes what I like to put in addition to those is the quantity of AS because I want you to know that we are measuring the quantity of AS on this horizontal axis and we're also measuring the quantity of AD. Remember AS is total production so anytime I say AS think total production AD total spending. Anytime I say AD think total spending and we're really measuring all of those on this horizontal axis. Okay, We're, we're measuring all of these in dollar amounts, dollars that have been adjusted for inflation. In time, I won't write all of these. I'll just write real GDP. Okay, But right now, for this first time we have the whole model, I want to put all of those. In fact, I'm even going to put something in front of GDP, real GDP here. I'm going to put equilibrium real GDP. Because I actually think the best thing for students to think about when they think about that horizontal axis is that it is measured the quantity of AD, the quantity of AS, and the equilibrium real GDP. Okay, those are the main three things that are being measured on the horizontal axis. Anyhow, I've got my graph, okay, I've got my curves already. There's three big curves on this graph. I got my LRAS, of course, it is vertical, okay, because the our total production, that's what AS is, in the long run is not dependent upon the price level. Okay, It will be a certain amount regardless of the price level. That's why it's vertical. However, in the short run, total production does vary with the price level, but only in the short run. AD, of course, aggregate demand, total spending, of course, also varies with the price level. It varies inversely with the price level. Now, next question. Where is this LRAS curve anchored? 100% of the time, it is anchored at full employment, okay? Full employment, which I'm going to put down as YF, okay? Remember, Y equals national income equals real GDP. There's that national income right there. Remember, national income, real GDP, we can use those synonymously, all right? So there's my full employment output. Now, next big thing that we get down right now, please hear this, okay? Where is the economy at? The economy is where the SRAS curve and the AD curve intersect. That's where the economy is at, or at least that's where the economy is moving towards. And for all intents and purposes, we can just go ahead and say the economy is at the intersection point of SRAS and AD, or like I said, that's at least where we're moving towards. We are not always on the LRAS. Now this particular graph I drew, I've got the intersection point of the SRAS and the AD on the LRAS, which means that right now we are producing our full employment level of output. But technically speaking, we could say that right now, YE, okay, my equilibrium real GDP, YE, all right, I'm going to put a sub-zero, is also equal to YF right now in this economy pictured on this graph. All right, now, of course, what we want to be able to do is look at changes in the world and go figure out what's going to be the impact on national income and price determination. So let's just pick something out there. Let's say that the stock market drops significantly in value. So we get a drop in the stock market. Well, what's, what's going to happen? What, what, what's that going to trigger? What kind of change are we going to see on our graph? Well, the wealth of our households is going down, okay? Because one of the major aspects of household wealth is their wealth in the stock market, held in the stock market. So when the price of the stocks come crashing down, households feel less wealthy. So what are households going to do when they feel less wealthy? They're going to cut back on their spending. We know that AD equals C plus I plus GP plus XN. Okay, that's what AD equals. 
So if C, if consumption starts to decrease, that's household spending starts to decrease because of a drop in the stock market, AD is going to shift to the left. So here we see AD shift to the left. And where are, and I'm going to put a little sub-zero over here and a sub-zero right there. Okay, I don't need to put a little sub-zero for LRAS because it's not going to shift in this example, okay? We rarely ever shift the LRAS, okay? So I'm just going to leave LRAS the way it is. AD shifts off to the left. So where's our economy going to go? Well, if we want to really understand, okay, this was our original price level. Well, this is now our quantity of total spending because this line has disappeared. That's not there anymore. So that's our total spending. This is our total production at existing or original price level. And so what would we get? We would get inventory starting to accumulate. And when inventory starts to go up, businesses will start to lower prices. When businesses start to lower prices, production will begin to fall off. And when production begins to fall off, we will move to this point right here, E sub 1. So E sub 0 to E sub 1. I'm going to draw that down. Take note, that is an equilibrium. The economy is always in equilibrium when it comes to the SRS and AD curves. So when we talk about the equilibrium, real GDP, that is once again determined by the intersection of the SRS and AD curve. So that's our equilibrium point. I put my YE1, okay? We are no longer at full employment output. We are no longer on the LRAS. We are now in a recession. And one of the biggest things to understand right now, when we fall off here to the left, is now we do have cyclical unemployment. You see, when we were at full employment, we had zero cyclical. But now that we have moved over here to the left, businesses have laid off workers as they cut production. They laid off workers, and cyclical unemployment is now possible. positive. We still have frictional. We still have structural. We always have those. But now we also have cyclical. We are in a recession. This left-hand side of LRAS is always indicating an economy in recession. So if you have an equilibrium to the left of LRAS, you are showing an economy in recession. Now, we're only going to be in this recession as long as we are in the short run. But I'm going to talk about that in the next video. All right, thanks for tuning in. See you in the next video. Bye.